Welcome to Step by Step, a video Bible study series presented by the Monte Vista Church of Christ in Phoenix, Arizona. One of the amazing things about the Bible is in it we can learn so many lessons about God's creation. Particularly, we can learn so many lessons about the various creatures God has made. In the Bible, we learn lessons about birds, and we learn lessons from dogs and pigs and leeches, and we even learn lessons from ants. We even learn lessons from these creatures that appear to be very small and, and insignificant, but they're extremely wise in the book of Proverbs. In Proverbs chapter 6, beginning with verse number 6, the wise man Solomon, he says these words. He says, go to the ant, O sluggard, or O lazy person. Observe her ways and be wise, which having no chief officer or ruler prepares for her food in the summer, and gathers her provision in the harvest. Notice how Solomon here in these verses, he mentions the ant. He says, even though the ant is very small, and even though it appears to be very insignificant, it can teach us so many important lessons about life. For example, one of the lessons that ants teach us about life is they teach us a lesson about preparation. A lesson about preparation. Here Solomon tells us that as he watched the ant, as he observed the small ant, he noticed how the ant prepares for the future. He noticed how the ant diligently gathers food in the summer so that he won't starve in the winter. The ant understands that today is not all there is, but there's more to come. There's more to come in his future. Solomon says the ant is wise because he prepares for what is to come. The question is, are we as wise as the ant? As the ant understands, do we also understand that today is not all there is, but there is also more to come? Do we also prepare for the future? Particularly, do we prepare for our spiritual future? Jesus talks about this in Matthew chapter 6. In Matthew chapter 6, and beginning with verse number 19, Matthew 6 and verse 19, Jesus says, Do not store for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in or steal for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Notice how Jesus here talks about preparing for the future. He talks about preparing for our spiritual future. He says that if we want to avoid suffering and being separated from God, then we need to be storing up treasures in heaven. We need to be doing like the ant does and gathering and preparing for it is to come. We need to be diligently doing things like making sure we're people of prayer and people who constantly read and, and study the scriptures and people who are constantly being generous and helpful and, and servants of God and servants of other people. You see, when we do those kinds of things, when we pray and study and worship and do good works, we are storing up treasures in heaven. And when we store up treasures in heaven, we are preparing for the future. We are following in the wise footsteps of the ant. The ant teaches us lessons about preparing for what is to come. And the ant also teaches us lessons about teamwork. Teamwork, going back to Proverbs chapter 6 and in verse number 7, Solomon tells us that even though the ant doesn't have a chief or an officer or a ruler, he still finds a way to get things done. He still finds a way to get his mission accomplished. He's able to get his mission accomplished because he works with, with other ants. He's cooperative. 
with other ants. He understands the need to work with a team of other ants in order to be successful in his work. The ant understands the value of cooperation and teamwork. The question is, are we as wise as the ant? Like the ant, do we understand that if we're going to be successful in the kingdom of God, then God expects us to work with other members of his spiritual family. God expects us to be unselfish and to be cooperative as we labor in his vineyard. This is exactly why in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the apostle Paul refers to the Lord's church as a body. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 20, the apostle Paul says that just like the human body is made up of different members and all the members do not have the same function. That's the same way it is in the body of Christ. That's the same way it works in the church of our Lord, like the human body, the spiritual body of Christ is also made up of individual members and all those members do not have the same function, but they're all equally important. They all must be exercised constantly for the spiritual body to function properly. And so like the ant understands the value of teamwork and working together with others, God expects us to understand the same thing. God expects us to understand that if we're going to be successful in his spiritual body, then we must fulfill our function. We must cooperate and work together with other members of the spiritual family. The ant teaches us the value of teamwork. And then finally, I want to suggest to you that from the ant, we also learn a lesson about persistence. Persistence. Have you ever found yourself destroying an ant bed before? Only to come back the next day and find it almost completely rebuilt. That ever happened to you before? Well, if so, then like me, you probably got frustrated by, by that. You probably got frustrated that after tearing down an ant bed, the next day it's almost completely rebuilt. But you know, there's a lesson that we can learn from that about ants. The lesson we learn is, is ants are very persistent. Uh, even though they may get their homes completely torn down, even though their work may, may crumble for a time, they, they, they don't give up. They don't easily throw in the towel. Even when their home is destroyed, they find a way to pick themselves up and start over again. They are committed to getting the job done, even if it means that they got to do it again. That's how ants operate. That's the attitude of the ant. The question is, do we have the same kind of attitude if we're Christians? As Christians, are we also persistent? Even when we're discouraged? Even when we feel like throwing in the towel, do we pick ourselves up? Do we lean on Jesus? Do we keep moving forward? Because we understand that Jesus doesn't want us to be quitters. The Apostle Paul was someone who understood this, according to what we find in the book of Philippians. Over in Philippians chapter 3, and in verse number 13, the Apostle Paul says this, Philippians 3 and verse 13. He says, Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. But one thing I do, one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Notice how when it came to Christianity, when it came to becoming more like Jesus Christ and growing in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the apostle Paul wasn't a quitter. Even though he was in prison at the time he wrote this letter, Paul was not going to give up. He was going to press on. He was going to keep moving forward because he wanted to obtain the prize. He wanted to obtain the goal. He wanted to be more like Jesus and ultimately make it to heaven. That was always on the forefront of his mind. And so thank God for ants. Whenever you see an ant, thank God for the ant. The ant, while it is a small weak and maybe even insignificant creature on the surface, the Bible says is extremely wise 
it is extremely strong and there's so many lessons that we can learn from it that can help us as we try to make our journey to heaven. Thanks for watching. For more online Bible study material or to find more episodes in this series, visit us on our website at montavista.church.